All right, so we figured out the problem, I think. I bought the wrong fuel pump the first time, and I blame myself partly for not checking, but the parts house sold me the wrong fuel pump. I asked for one for a 1995 F-150. This is the one for a 1995 F-150. This is the one that came out of the front tank. We went and picked it up. This is the one I just ordered off Rock Auto. Notice that our valves look similar, the way that the piping is, and that one looks similar. That one looks nothing like either of them. Hmm. Makes you wonder, huh? anything else today I want to talk about what we've done over this back the past weekend um, there was a lot of rain like weather coming in and out there was a hurricane down in Florida I believe we were getting stuff off of that so there wasn't a lot of recording but there was a lot of work that got done we actually got done I I think we've actually made more progress in this last weekend than we have in a while now of course it's not where it needs to be and as of right now I have an awful valve cover rattle, um, which I think, which is not related to the computer issue. That's a mechanical problem. We're gonna deal with that today. Um, but yeah, so we currently have now found another computer for it. It took a couple days of searching to actually find one. Uh, Rock Auto didn't have one. I went to a couple parts stores. They didn't want. They they couldn't get me one. So I ended up just sending a sending an email to Rock Auto and another time whenever I got a new one. And it was like maybe two days later. And they were emailing me back saying that they had one. So um, yeah, so that is the that is the gist of what we've done to this thing so far. Um, as you can see, we even drove it. Uh, it does not pull very well as of right now. It doesn't want to pull, but I think that's still because the engine's running rough. Plus, we do have old tranny fluid. We don't. We haven't even taken a look at the transmission. But uh, while I was under there doing the gas tanks, I did notice that the rear seal on it leaks so we do have a fluid leak so I went ahead and whenever I uh, deduce what this oil issue is um, figure out if I need to order a new oil pump or whatever then I'm gonna go ahead and get a transmission seal while I'm at it also while we're under there today I'm gonna go ahead and get a uh, reading on what kind of transmission this thing has in it whether it's an E4OD or whatever they decided to put in this one and I will be going from there 
All right, guys. So I know we're just staring at an exhaust pipe right now, but I don't have the truck up in the air yet to pull off the oil filter. But um, real quick, I wanted to talk about some of the things, like a a theory that I have on the um, on the oil issue that we're currently having. So currently, the lifters are rattling very loudly, and I've got no pressure. All right, so oil not really getting to the engine very well. Therefore, I mean, that can cause it to run bad, too. Um, my theory is that, what, what I hope it is, really, is that because this truck has been sitting off and on since 2007, and it sat for a solid three years without even being touched, there's so much sludge in it that it clogged up the oil filter I put on it. Um, that is a possible theory that I have. The other thing that could be is a bad oil pump. But oil pump is kind of like a water pump to me and if I'm going to have to drop the oil pan to look at it anyway I might as well put a new one in it because I got to put a new oil pan gasket in might as well make all that fresh and new that way in the future we don't have problems with it um so but but what we want to do first is we want to make sure that it isn't the oil filter because if because if if there's no reason if if there's no reason for me to drop the pan then I'm not going to do that but if there is, then obviously we're going to replace the oil pump, the oil pan gasket, and see what else we see in there. Make sure there's no bearings that are bad, camshaft, or I mean crankshaft bearings aren't bad. Anything else that could possibly go wrong. But first, like I said, we're going to take off the oil filter and then we're going to cut it open and look at the filter and just see how gunked up it is and go from there. So if we think about what happens in the oil system for just a second, let's break it down. So your oil rests in your oil pan, right? Whenever the car is sitting, that's where it all is. Whenever the truck or vehicle kicks on, the oil pump picks it up from the pan and sends it up through the filter and into the engine. Pretty simple setup. So if we're getting oil to the filter, that, that would mean that the pump is working. Now, does it mean it's weak? No, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that it is working. So that lead so that would lead us to believe that it's a clogged filter now do we know it's a clogged filter no the only way to know is to take it off and check it so but whenever i pull this loose you'll see oil come out which means the oil is getting to the filter i've already done this once but anyway if you'll look here okay come on now there we go as you can see there is a little bit of oil coming out there a little bit of ATF too. We threw a little bit of ATF in there to try to break some of that up. But um, but yeah, there is oil coming out of our filter. So our oil pump is functioning. Is it doing what it needs to do? We don't know that yet. But anyways, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take off that oil filter and check it out. All right, guys. So just some you know normal inspections I see here. Whenever I pulled it off. Only that much oil even came out of the filter. See, and there's a little bit draining out right there, but that's not what it should be doing. This thing should be pouring, but this thing is really heavy. I mean, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's oil like sloshing around in there, and nothing should be getting trapped. It all should be coming in, and we're going right back out, and it's obviously not. Obviously, oil is getting trapped. So... We are going to go ahead and cut this thing apart because I do want to look at it. I've already got a new one. Um, and if, you know, if you're doing this and you pull out your new oil filter, which, <laughs> same brand. Um, and as you can see, this one I can pick up with one hand relatively easy. This thing, nothing. You don't hear anything coming out of it. It's good. It's brand new. But, hold on. Put that right there for just a moment. And, but this one is like pretty heavy. I mean, for an oil filter, this thing's heavy. It should not be this heavy. And this thing's sitting at this angle. Whenever it's on the truck, it's at a, it's sideways. So all that's laying in the bottom. So that could cause or not, that could cause a pressure issue. We are still gonna pop apart, like I said. But that tells me, that leads me to believe that this filter is clogged, and that could have been our issue. So, like I said, we are gonna go ahead. And cut it apart just to make sure but I'm pretty sure that thing is clogged okay so I was gonna cut the whole thing apart but one thing real quick 
I made this tiny cut in it right here and oil is just gushing out of it. <laughs> Look at that. That's ridiculous. That tells me this thing is like 100% clogged. I mean, come on. I barely made a tiny hole in it. And it look at that. I'm on it upside down and it's gushing out. Well, I hold it directly upside down. But if I just tilt it slightly to the side, look how much oil is coming out of that. I don't even have this plug pulled up, so. I mean, there's probably a quarter of a quart or about a half a quart in this damn thing that's just stuck in there. I mean, good lord, that just tells me this damn thing's clogged. But, I, I could be wrong. I'm almost certain I'm not, but I could be wrong. What I really want to check for is if there's any metal in here um, besides what I cut. But I want to make sure there's no metal flakings in there. That could mean that our cam uh, bearings are bad, and that's a whole other ball game. So I do want to go ahead and check it for that. And um, whenever we drain the oil, I'll inspect it too. But so far... I think I actually do see metal flakings, and that could be a major problem. I don't know for sure, though, because there was a bunch of, like, s dirt and grime in the bottom of this, so. Um, anyway, that oil does look pretty clean, if I'm honest. So, anyways, guys, with all that being said, I'm going to wait for this thing to stop gushing. Try to get some more of the oil out of it. It's actually getting lighter, because <laughs> there's not a, you know, half quart of oil in it. Um, and then I'll continue cutting it apart and we'll look at the actual insides of it all right guys so what I'm going to currently be doing is uh, go ahead and draining the oil out of this thing um, it is pretty bad uh, I might go get a different pan because this one's about full I do have another one though um, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil because this looks like oil that's already been ran this thing for like 5,000 miles and we just put it in there whenever we got the truck and we haven't even driven it but from her house to here and then it's ran um, but we did run it a lot we've ran this engine quite a bit um, had oil going through it so hopefully we got a big chunk of the gunk out a chunk of the gunk ha. but uh, hopefully we got most of the gunk out of this engine from it sitting for close to 10 years now so um, with all that being said I'm gonna go ahead and start drinking the oil after that once that oil filters done we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting it apart taking a look at it because that oil filter is not going back on we've already seen plenty of evidence to tell us that there was definitely something wrong with it now, whether, now, whenever we pop it apart, that will tell us 100% whether that was causing our whole problem or just most of it. Um, but with all that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and just start. Okay, so you can probably tell that I got this thing apart. This is the insides of the filter. Basically, it's literally just filtered, but do you see how gunked up that thing is? This looks like an oil filter after about 10,000 miles normally. One that should have been changed a long time ago. Now, there's a bunch of gunk in there that you can't really see real well, but we look in there. All that crap came out of the oil. So. And also guys, as I was cutting it apart, more oil kept gushing out. This is another pan. This is not the original one. And I got that much. Usually about a quarter of oil will just dump out of an oil filter. You normally don't have to cut them apart for it to come out. Which in this case I did because this filter was so clogged up that no oil was allowed. It wasn't allowing oil to get through it. Um, so yeah guys, but I did want to cut it apart just to show you how bad this thing was. That's just a return spring holder. But yeah. Take a look at that. Now I would cut apart a new one, but I really don't want to go through the trouble. You can clearly see that this thing is full of crap that is just built up from the engine. We will probably have to do another oil change on this thing really soon, probably before 3,000 miles, probably in another two or 300 miles. We're probably going to have to go ahead and, well, maybe not that long. I might do one after 1,000 miles. Um, go ahead and throw in a new filter and uh, new oil in it. But yeah, this is the oil that came out of it. As you can see, it's solid black, which is also not good. Also a very, a sign that this oil needed to be changed. Um, even though it already has been changed, this is not the oil that was in the truck whenever I got it. 
whenever I first got it, I did change it out. Uh, this is actually a filter that's only about four months old at this at, at this time. So this is a relatively new filter, and you can see how much damage has already been done. So, yeah. Yes. All right, I'm not going to show you because it's getting dark, and I really want to pack up. But we put the new filter on it, put some oil in it. It is a quart low, so the valve covers, so the valves do still rattle, but it's nowhere near as loud, and we've rebuilt pressure at the gauge. So, like I said, guys, that little bucket, that little guy down there, the little oil filter, will cause all kinds of problems, pressure related, and all that. And honestly, guys, an oil system in a truck this old isn't that complicated. Now, I cannot speak for the newer vehicles, and I cannot speak for anything other than Ford. I explained it earlier. If you want to go back and watch that, you can. So, uh, yeah. All right, so I want to tell a story real quick. And this is what happened between what you've already seen and now. Where we're at, at the point that we're at right now. So, my grandma had a sinkhole in her yard, so we had to go up there and fix that for her. So, while we were up there, I went ahead and grabbed the other fuel pump out of the bed liner that's up there on that truck. Because I was like, I want to compare it to the one I took out and make sure that, make sure that they're the same. Because at, at this point, I've already got new fuel pumps and a new gas tank. I've got all that in. So, I bring everything home. And I compare it to the to the to the fuel pump that we just put in it, the one that ran this truck for, you know, several months. Turns out they're not even the same fuel pump. Um, this the auto parts store that I got it from actually sold me the wrong fuel pump. Even though I asked them for one specifically for this truck, they sold me the wrong one. Not very happy about that, but it is partially my fault because I did not check it whenever I took it out of the tank, and I should have. Um, anyway, so we compared it to the one that we just got from Rock Auto. It is the same as the first one that came from Ford. So we put it in and we got the right pressures. We're no longer done with too much fuel. And all, and all these problems that we've been dealing with were fixed for now. Now, at this point, we still have the gas tanks on the ground. Everything's hooked up, but the truck does run. Okay. And it runs the best we've ever heard. It. So we come back the next day, bolt everything in, get, our, get, get all of our fuel tanks set in place bolt it in, go to crank the truck up, and it runs like crap. We're smelling fuel, and we're like, what the heck? Literally just yesterday, it was running pretty good. So we ended up doing a little bit of research, finding out that a lot of people have had trouble with the computers on these trucks. So we're like, all right, whatever, we'll give it a shot. So we run down to the junkyard, because I don't want to buy a new one because it's like 100 bucks, and I don't like spending that much on a part that I don't know is bad. So we run down to the junkyard, and we grab a computer out of an L6 manual. Um, the only real difference between these computers is that it doesn't have torque converter power. So the transmission doesn't work correctly. But we're not even worried about that at this given moment. We're just trying to get the engine fixed. So we're like, okay, we'll stick it in there see if the engine runs better. We stick it in there, crank up the engine, and it runs like a dream. Except for the valve covers rattling. And that was the problem that we dealt with today, which was the clogged oil filter. So, that is where we are at right now. Um, like I said earlier, it is a quart low. Uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll put just put a quart of oil in it, and hopefully, that, I mean that should clear up that issue. But it's definitely not a definitely not an oil pump. Otherwise, our pressures wouldn't be good. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, with well, story time's over now, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.